So we should first simplify the diagram. So we take this center piece over here. We realize that W1 is operating in that direction. So we can go like this, W1, and then W2 goes upwards like that. And I forget, I've been forgetting to put the angles in, that's 50 degrees. And this angle over here is 24 degrees, like that. And then of course W3 would just act downwards. W1 is also 50 newtons. Okay, so what we've done is we've just taken this diagram and we've simplified it. So we can actually just scratch it out. But some of you at home watching this might actually be looking at that. So I'm not going to be rude and do that. So there we go. But once again, we don't need to use this. Okay, let me take that off again. So we're going to be using trigonometry. So what we need to do now is we need to construct a little triangle, but you don't need to use a ruler and a protractor. That's not what I'm saying. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to do W1. Okay, so we know that that's 50 newtons. Now check this out. We know that this angle here is 24 degrees. The next one I'm going to do is W2. Now I know that W2 will go something like that. I don't know how far it must go, but that's okay because I know that the next one is W3, and W3 goes down. So if I go down, that's not going to work because it's supposed to complete the triangle. So all that I do then is I just do something like there, okay? And then I scratch that out. See how I'm not using a ruler, I'm just drawing a quick little diagram. This is my favorite method, it's the fastest. That's W2, that's W3, and this is W1, which we know is 50 newtons. So guys, this is how this next part works. What we can do, and some of my students have become quite good at doing this, so what you can do is you can put this dotted line here. So if you use alternating angles, which is like that, then instantly we know, or well, we should realize that this is 24. Then look at W2 over here. Look at its angle. It is elevated at 50 degrees from the horizontal. So that would be this little angle over here. Can you see that? So then we can just add these two angles together and just say 74. And so that'll be 74. And then if this whole block over here is 90, then of course we can work out this angle by just saying 90 minus 24. And I think that'll be 66. Then we can use the sum of the angles in a triangle to work out this angle. If you do that, you would find out that that angle is going to be equal to 40. And so there we go, guys. Everything is sorted. So now we use trigonometry, where we have two options. You could use Sokotoa, but you can only use Sokotoa if it is a 90 degree triangle. If it is not a 90 degree triangle, then we are going to use our new formula like that. And remember, I, I made a video explaining how this formula works. If you haven't watched it, you should go have a look at that. So the way it works, it's a really nice formula. You need to find a side, so for example, 50. Now that angle 50 is opposite which angle? Is it opposite the 74, the 66, or the 40? Well, it's opposite the 40, so it's opposite sin 40. So we'll say 50 over sin 40 equals to any other side. So for example, W2 over its angle. Now its angle is 66, so that's sin 66. So I'm just gonna rewrite that over here. And so then what you do is you need to get W2 by itself. And so we will do that by multiplying the sin 66 across. So it's gonna end up giving you 50 over sin 40 multiplied by sin 66. And so W2 will be equal to 71.06 newtons. Now we just repeat the same process for to find W3. And you can use any two sides. So for example, I'm going to use 50 again. So we know that that goes with sin of 40 equals to, now this time we're going to take W3 over its angle, which is 74. So we say sin 74. And so I'm going to quickly rewrite that. So that's 50 over the sin of 40 equals to W3 over the sin of 74. And then if I have to get W3 alone, 
you would have to multiply the sin 74 across, and so that's going to be 74.78 newtons.